Almost a decade in the making, the Teosuko Heritage Preservation and Community Development Project is a collaborative heritage initiative based in southeastern Mexico. Our team is very excited to present you with some of the outcomes of that research and some of the goals of the project moving forward. You're going to hear in this presentation from a great mix of collaborators, including Dr. Richard Leventhal, Dr. Tiffany Kane, Samantha Seiler, Don Bartolome Potmo, Doña Lucia Chantus, Casey Dizarins Morgan, Doña Socorro Potsip, Dr. Aldo Anzures Tapia, Doña Antonia Potchus, Doña Beatriz Pot Chable, and Doña Marcelina Chan Canche. So let's get started. Hello. Today we would like to talk about the Teosuco Heritage Preservation and Community Development Project. My name is Richard Leventhal from the University of Pennsylvania. This project is not just a research program about the past, but is rather a large-scale community-driven project that connects the modern Maya community of Teosuco to a 19th century past for its future. The people of Teosuco are equal partners in the work and development of the project. We actively work with the three main institutions in town, the Ejido or Socialized Land Organization, the Mayor's Office, and the local museum of the Caste War. In addition, several people within Tiasuko are direct collaborators within the project. Tiasuko is a modern Maya community located in the Yucatan Peninsula in southern Mexico. This region was also the center for the ancient Maya culture more than 1,000 years ago. Although there is a direct connection of the ancient Maya culture and the living Maya today, the people of Teosuco and of other towns in the region have identified their heritage based upon a more recent past, a past from the 19th century. We must also be aware that more than 100 years of Maya archaeology in the region have provided few benefits directly to the modern Maya people. This heritage project is focused upon a 19th century rebellion when the Maya people of the region rebelled against the Mexican economic and social systems. It was a rebellion that lasted for more than 50 years and was one of the most successful indigenous rebellions in the Americas. It has often been said that this rebellion continues today within many Maya communities of the region. This project started out as a study of the caste war, but quickly evolved into a complex program of multiple sub-projects. Many of these sub-projects have been developed and are run by people within Tiasuco, and you will hear many of their voices today. Some of these subprojects include archaeological studies of the 19th century rebellion, but many are also focused upon how the people of Tiasuco view their past and their connection to the rebellion, as well as how they view their present and their future, culturally, economically, and structurally within the 21st century. Although this project has grown significantly, its archaeological subprogram remains a pillar. Developed as a community-based participatory research program, our archaeological investigations have been done in close collaboration with Teosuko's Ejido, its socialized land title and representative organization. Ejiditarios, landholders, work closely with a team of international collaborators to explore Teosuko's historic landscape. These investigations aid the Ejido in establishing local conservation programs and in being active representatives of their own local histories. The archaeological subprogram has grown from targeted survey of one place, a historic subject town of Teosuco known as Tela or Lalka, where we've also conducted some small scale excavations, to a large scale regional survey documenting predominantly 16th to 20th century towns, haciendas or plantation estates, likely dedicated to sugar production, ranches, mostly dealing with animal husbandry, and historic roads, which you'll hear more about in just a moment. Because Teosuco and its former parish are widely considered the cradle of the caste of Yucatan, 
A special area of our research investigations is dedicated to how the landscape changed with the war, especially with the proliferation of field fortifications known as trincheras. As of 2019, our collaborative investigations have registered over 40 sites, 10 major road systems, and hundreds of examples of wartime defensive architecture. Our team has documented 10 haciendas and 16 ranchos, and survey work has focused on mapping these places, as well as the extensive system of roads that connected them to one another, to the towns of Tiasuco and Tela, and to the other small communities that people formed in the landscape surrounding Tiasuco. Although the haciendas and the Hito lands are much smaller than the great landed estates surrounding the economically, politically, and socially central port cities of Marida and Campeche, they have architecturally elaborate main houses, ancillary structures for cooking and for storage, and extensive water and wall systems. Some haciendas, like the property of Maya caste war leader Jacinto Pot, even have elaborate archways that people would have had to pass through when they entered the property. Through archival research, architectural analyses, excavations, and oral histories, we hope to learn more about the people who lived and labored at these haciendas, what people were producing at these haciendas, how these estates were connected to the surrounding communities, as well as regional markets, and how these estates influenced social dynamics in the years leading up to the caste war. Oral histories provide insights into how these places were reoccupied and used by families after the caste war, as well as the continued significance of these places and the memories and identities of people today. So what's it like to collaborate with the archaeological subprogram? Allow us to share some reflections from project co-lead Don Bartolome Potmo. Bueno, yo me llamo Bartolomé Potmo. Yo soy originario de aquí de Quiosuco. Y pues yo soy un campesino y ejidatario también del pueblo. ¿no? Bueno, me dieron la oportunidad de, de trabajar con ellos hace aproximadamente cuatro años. Con la oportunidad que que hubo con, con este proyecto. Ahorita ya conozco aproximadamente entre 80 90% de todo mi ejido y también en la oportunidad que me dieron de los ejidatarios para pues, representarlos en un comité, de haber caminado toda la superficie de, también del ejido a un 90%. Creo que hay muchos de los que nos han apoyado en el trabajo han tenido este conocimiento, un poquito más de conocer lo que, lo que nosotros tenemos en nuestro equipo. En la hacienda de Esculumpit sabemos que es de Jacinto Pá. El de Tela, actualmente conocido como Lalcá, pues lo conocemos solamente la iglesia. Vemos algunas fechas en, en, en los muros, pero desgraciadamente no sabíamos el por qué está escrito eso. Y a través de este proyecto sí se va entendiendo un poco más de saber los años eh, de las construcciones, eh, de las remodelaciones y otros así. ¿no? Y también los, de los, de las diferentes haciendas, pues es lo mismo como por ejemplo de, de charcos que están muy cerca de nosotros pero solamente la, los ejidatarios que están trabajando ahí pues solamente ellos lo conocían ahora hay muchos de los ejidatarios que lo conocen y creo que de esa manera también de eso están pensando en aceptar el, las visitas de Cruz podría ser que que haya un poco más de trabajo para este proyecto pero pues creo que la meta sí se está, sí se está dando. Lo que pasa es, como lo he dicho, es, es muy despacio. Pero sí poco a poco cada temporada sí se está, sí se está avanzando este, hacia el punto del pico. Creo que eso es lo más importante. Lo más importante de todo eso. Sí se está logrando 
proyecto de, de las investigaciones y también lo de turismo. Although we are very proud of the work we've done to document the historic landscape surrounding Teosuco, there remains substantial work to be done within Teosuco's town boundaries. So next you're going to hear from two of our colleagues whose central focus has been on the documentation and conservation assessment of the numerous pre-war era architectures that make up Teosuco's historic core. The Historic Preservation Subprogram began in 2013 at the request of the then mayor of Teosuco and many of the owners of the colonial structures that exist within the town center. They formed a town committee to oversee any work being done on the buildings. Their goal was to create a register that provided basic information on all of the structures we encounter from the pre-war era and to use that information to request restoration funds and recognition from the government. The map here shows the locations of the structures we have recognized as being from the pre-war era, surrounding the large church building that is in the center of town. In 2014, my co-project lead Socorro Potzib and I embarked on a multi-year journey to survey and document the wide range of historic structures that exist in what we consider the urban core of Tiasuco. We photographed, measured, and drew over 60 structures and conducted hours of interviews with owners about their histories. We also documented the condition of each structure in order to better assess what types of conservation work would be needed to make the structures truly functional again. And here you can see an example of our survey form and then um, the register that we created from that survey. This subprogram also includes the documentation of the church in the center of town, partially destroyed during the caste war, and a powerful emblem of the rebellion for people in the region. Beginning in 2015, several local politicians, using our report as a base, began to push for recognition of Tiasuco as a historic zone on a national level. In preparation for this, some minor repair work was done on the facades of the buildings. Finally, in 2018, Tiasuco was declared Patrimony of the State of Quintana Roo, and in 2019, Patrimony of the Nation, and a historic zone was declared. Unfortunately, these declarations came with no funding for conservation work for the houses, despite dangerous conditions at a few of the structures. These declarations shifted our work to a more ethnographic look at how historic properties can become political tools and how declarations of patrimony can change the use of the past. To explain this change in direction further, I will defer to my project co-lead, Socorro. What are some of the challenges that the Historic Preservation Subprogram has encountered since Teosuco was named a National Historic Zone? What work has been done and what is left to do? Here are some reflections on both the politics and advances of our project and how we're moving forward from my project co-lead, Doña Socorro Potzib. Hola, buenas noches. Mi nombre es Socorro Potzib. Actualmente trabajo en la alcaldía del pueblo de Tijuco. Eh, hace seis años llevo trabajando con Casey. El primer año fue en el 2014. Gracias a Casey se la historia de por qué las casas coloniales acá en Texas. A los al tercer año que empecé con Casey fue que ya entré como parte de la alcaldía y yo siento que sí hubo un poquito de, de avance con ella. No queremos meter política, pero desgraciadamente aquí así son las cosas. Ven que tienes un poquito de, de proyecto y también nosotros como que queriendo que nos apoyen. Pues bueno, aquí estamos, esto hicimos. Y en ese tiempo era una etapa donde los políticos buscaban donde, ¿cómo se dice? ¿Cómo se puede decir? Donde un cargo, un cargo en el gobierno. Entonces aprovechamos 
aprovechamos ese trance de, de la política y nos metemos aprovechando también mi, mi puesto en la alcaldía que conocimos gente y gracias al, al proyecto de, 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 de que es todo lo que hicimos este año porque sí se logró el, el libro Ah, el registro, sí, el registro con fotos, nombres, todo eso. Gracias a ese, ese registro que tuvimos, llegó, creo que llegó en manos de Ina, si no me equivoco. Llegó en manos de, no me gusta mencionar nombres, pero sí lo voy a mencionar, de la diputada Gaby en su tiempo, ahora ya no es diputada, pero en su tiempo ella, pues quiso echarnos la mano. Y sí nos echó la mano, pero como todos saben, la política se juega feo. Entonces ella quiso meterse mucho como que diciendo que yo fui. Cuando, sí es cierto, apoyó, pero si, si el proyecto no estuviera, empezarían desde cero. Desde cero. Entonces en ese lapso de tiempo, creo que pasó casi un año, para que ella lograra igual según bajar los recursos. Con eso se trabajó lo de las casas coloniales. Quedó muy bonito. Ahí si le preguntas a la gente, oye, ¿qué piensas de las casas coloniales? No, pues quedaron muy bonitas después de que se pintaron. Pero quedamos a medias. Cosa que Casey y yo queríamos que fuera tan diferente. Queríamos que fuera en general las casas que, porque todos necesitan, sí. todas están deterioradas, pero nos quedamos a medias, a pesar de que estamos allá, tanto la autoridad del pueblo como el proyecto de Casey no paró ahí, pero ellos ya no lo vieron así. Es como digo, hubo un trance de política que es la que se aprovechó para meter un poquito, mal hecho, pero... Sí, pero vamos a tener porque vamos a seguir luchando. Vamos a seguir luchando y todo tiene que ver con la política. Era un honor. Tenemos que tratar de meternos a buscar gente que nos apoye. Y si Katie sigue acá, trabajo va a valer mucho. Vamos a seguir con él. Si así lo quiere ir. The Language Reclamation sub-program started in 2013 and it's a close collaboration between the local museum dedicated to the Cas War and the University of Pennsylvania. The main concern that this collaboration tries to address is the rapid linguistic language shift that is happening in the region from Yucatec Maya, the indigenous language spoken in um, the peninsula, uh, to Spanish and even English. The aim of the project is mainly to open ideological and implementational spaces in order for uh, people in Teosuco to see Maya as something that is present and as not something from the past. In order to do this, we have created workshops for children all the way from um, children that are two years old to 18 years old. We have invited local artists such as uh, rappers in order for them to show how Maya is a language with the one we can play, with the one we can sing, and isn't just a thing from the past that it pertains to Chichen Itza or Tulum. Also, we have uh, created spaces within the museum uh, where adults can see uh, Maya as a language that can be written and can explain things from the present and from the past. In order to do this, we have changed the museography uh, from a monolingual perspective that was just in Spanish to a trilingual perspective, where we're bringing Spanish, English, and also Yucatec Maya. But um, these are just a few of the initiatives that both the University of Pennsylvania and the local museum have created. But let me present to you Antonia and Betty, who are actually the lead educators that are um, in charge of most of these initiatives. <laughs> Atantakik Iko Yetesham Mes Iko Beituno Mayatano Humpel Kana Nisham Chentumbe Mishbale Tan Usata Ukushtal 
Pensilvania, Pensilvania te acapacha o vetca junpel, piquil junte a le esa que vete que te jijelas maco y te bonilo, que te batistió junpite tu ne universidad de Pensilvania, Pensilvania tu tac muctone, bicho pasta li u es que le cala y te ujel, ujelo, catequile este lo pecha piquil con es el pasta le. Katun kokon il usutu ich maya lecho be katilu usutu ich kaslan ans. Uche me ya hilob tek tek kasek betke leti ek bintu na hil shoko ek bisik nu ukulobi hachtalam pa le ek bisik. Ma change abili me nach me ya ah kansa hobe muncha nu tiko ba ashe tak ek betko. Ujeshane, mis, tan shanek bin, te cansa ho, mentum, maik oje bishi, vale, katek tsa, tek tukule, bey u, pacta u beji kole, ya shtanile kujol pachta, tsokole, ku utzi pacta, tialka, koch chak, wakuloble, uka pacta. Un el sansama me yahi. Beitunsha ek kansik tamayao. Ves la que te paca. Vale mek ole bashkin. Ek ik tulak luich. Ek ole jane e pala lo tela. Ve la ka. Mataku oxa ol tikobi. Vale tiu itkine. Ya no yikobe. Etu kanopte museo kana. So koshane utsek ik bish e museo tsup ata. Hump el kuchi ti au katchit bi. U kuchi ti u kansa mayat an. Tush kukuchu masho be. U kato anta ti tsibo. Beituno cha tu kuliyano ti em mayat an. Yetel ku ikono shane he bish hump el kuchi. No kulit si alkut sa oit bule. Since 2014, our team, led by Marcelina Chan Canche of Tiasuco, has collected oral histories and old photographs from members of the community. These range from photos of the repobladores, the repopulators of the town, uh, to weddings and historical events. At first, we were looking for information about the memories of the caste war or what the town had looked like in the past. We have now published two volumes of images of Tiasuko with plans for more in the future. The first, as you can see here, focused on what we thought were some of the oldest photos we had with their stories adjacent to them as told by the Tiasukenios who own them. The second volume focused on tracing some branches of the lineages of the first repopulators of Tiasuko who came seeking land in the 1930s. We trace some of those families up into the people who live in Tiasuco today. To explain how we go about collecting interviews and photos that are displayed in these books, I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, Marcelina Chan Canche. <laughs> Biskuya la tequinova. Tene tinchoca lingüística y cultura maya y el quimea taxaki beorai. Ichilujabil 2014 tincaota doctor Richard Letier tu ya cata temo pasta ni meas tu yetele. Catincata te va a sholan. Letier tu solas tene yo la lupe proyecto quimea te cuey tu cajel quijo su coe. Tu solas tene ya busque que la se y me ya jopu. hasta la mujer el mejor talento me machete abelujo como activo el nahi 
Dia la bincik batu e nahe kabe tak kaot kuyumi. Utala mihe tu no len kuchma ko bo kabe ta binghunteng ka ten osten ya lu pasta lu u wachikote u holi u hola a wotoch. Ya te le tu ne cada ocho días o tres días aquí bincik baliete lo viola lo que la si le tsik balo wey tu kahi le tsuka. Le ya es chico para que me tono le te he visto chuca hale tal el único hoy anda tu cabil y chilingua que es treinta o que es treinta y cinco le que tú na tal el marco tu cabil tip no o que es aquí o que es tu que la se me encajo ve tu casa se cajo hoy tú na le chico para tú no le te tú na quién quién ha tiktio bo y te llamo yo lo yo la guerra de castas cuya la no ya te tú no que la caca ve te tú no el ya cach chicbalo ve ya y chile que lo caca tú no a que en aquel día te quiero las últimas fotos o fotos antiguas de tu cosuco le que te no que el me ya casa casa que me ya te chan tú me encanta tú 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 te cone a ve te le uca o tal le balo va tú me le balo que lo utia la que me empala lo utial yo la luca o tal yo la he mejor foto sobo o a que es le chico balo bo yo la alma usa tal ubila tú no es buen foto sobo y este le chico balo bo outreach and sharing our research with the wider community is critical to our project mission one of the first tasks we undertook with the help of our colleague Suzanne Abel was new signage and labels for the community room in the Castor Museum. This room houses artifacts that have been donated by locals, as well as the portraits of the leaders of the caste war. We added their stories in three languages, Maya, Spanish, and English, as well as signs about our project. Every year during the anniversary celebration of the caste war, we put up a temporary exhibition in the town plaza that highlights our work for that year. The banners are then donated to the museum and the ejido for future use. This is an excellent way to reach out to people who may not have interacted with us directly, as well as visitors to town. In recent years, we have added more information about each specific sub-program to highlight the breadth of our project. In addition to these annual public exhibits, we also worked with the ejido to create their own small-scale exhibit spaces focused on the history of the ejido system in Teosuco the oral histories contributed by Ejido members, and what we had learned about significant sites located on the Ejido lands. When the Ejido gathers for assemblies or special events, and when other festivals are put on in the town, this space acts as a public-facing interface between the Ejido's administration, the wider community, and any outside visitors. We also give public talks at the anniversary, or in the museum, or for special events. We often use this platform to officially and publicly present the comic books or the historical books to the town authorities. This project includes active collaborators from Tiasuko who participate in all aspects of the work. This includes the collecting of information, whether that is archaeological data or oral histories or interviews of owners of colonial houses in the town. We feel that such collaboration is important, but we also feel that our friends and colleagues in Tiasuko should be part of the process of dissemination of the ideas of the project. Therefore, our collaborators are publishing with us and are joining us at international conferences to present our ideas and interpretations about the past and the present. Most recently, in 2019, we all presented a series of papers at the 11th International Congress of Maya Scholars in Chetumal, Mexico. One of the bedrock concepts of this project is the connection of heritage preservation to development within the community. This development is connected to the social and cultural parts of the Teosuco town, as well as to economic development and the future growth of the community. Teosuco is located near a large-scale tourism system within Mexico. We are working with the people of Teosuco to develop a small-scale ecotourism program connected to touristic visits to the rainforest and the remains of the 19th century caste war rebellion. 
This program would, we hope, benefit Tiusuko economically, but also allow our collaborators to control and tell their story of their past. I want to introduce you to Lucia Chan Tus, a prominent member of the Tiusuko community and now a student in heritage at the new Tiusuko University. Lucy will speak about the Tiusuko project and the community's aspirations for a small-scale, community-controlled tourism project. Bueno, en lo que respecta a lo que es el ejido, como el, el trabajo se realiza en el ejido, nos permite conocer y valorar lo que tenemos. Antes nosotros no sabíamos para qué nos iba a servir conocer el Blanca. Sin embargo, ahora ya lo vemos con esa visión de que es algo importante para que decía no el beneficio al fin y al cabo es de la comunidad pero lo que se queda aquí son todo lo que ya se hizo el conocimiento que ya obtuvimos eh, de, de qué es lo que vimos cómo se llevó a cabo eso es lo único que se nos queda aquí en el y eso es lo que deberíamos de darle seguimiento ahora sí viéndolo con una visión de que eh, qué logros pudiéramos obtener a través también de eso de la Universidad de Tijuana, nos está viendo puertas, ¿no? de que, ¿por qué lo digo? Porque el trabajo que ellos hacen, a la visión que nosotros tenemos, eh, de manera como equitaria, yo puedo ver de que estamos pensando en lo que es el turismo, eh, eh, un turismo, un, que sea ecoturismo, la, la idea que tenemos, tal vez no todos pensemos igual, pero en lo personal sí me gustaría y algunas personas también cercanas a mí como fueron mis compañeros personas que tienen ese interés de llevarlo a cabo sentimos que a través de, de esos trabajos que vinieron aquí estamos conociendo lo que tenemos porque no sabía yo al menos desconocía yo qué cosas importantes tenía que hacer pero gracias a, a ese tipo de trabajo estamos conociendo parte de lo que es la historia que tampoco no lo teníamos muy bien así asimilado y con respecto a la universidad que tenemos ahora de lo que viene siendo parte también de sus de sus materias el de hacer etnografía el de hacer investigación entonces yo yo siento que a futuro sí nos puede beneficiar ¿no? en lo que viene siendo para beneficiar el pueblo imaginemos un pueblo con un ecoturismo ya en, en proceso que ya se esté llevando a cabo pues nos beneficia a las familias, a nosotros, a la comunidad. Y siento yo que sí, es muy importante y necesario que vayamos de la mano con ellos y vayamos aprendiendo también porque no hay cosas que les Archaeology and cultural heritage studies don't exist in a vacuum. They are tied to colonial histories and embedded in contemporary politics. Our collaborative, community-based research acknowledges and critically embraces the impacts of heritage research on the communities within and with whom we work. By collaborating with Maya people to develop heritage projects based on their own interests and priorities, the Tiosuko Heritage Project explores how heritage research can benefit Maya communities in the present and work towards building sustainable futures.